Things got so bad not long after her father's death that Julia almost sold the farm at auction. It took a $10,000 gift from a cousin to keep it in the family. And much more Dinsmore family history was to be made here. In 1883, the parlor again came alive with music and festivity as Miss Julia's niece Patty married Tilden Selms. The couple befriended Teddy Roosevelt, who, like them, tried ranching in the North Dakota Territory. And their friendship uh, was a very close, a very intimate one, and they remained friends throughout their lives. And you, we have here in the house the autographed portrait to Patty uh, of Teddy Roosevelt. We also have a massive elk head that uh, is on the wall that he shot and sent to the Kentucky women, as he fondly called them. Hannah Baird is vice chairman of the Dinsmore Homestead Foundation, well versed in family history. We have a line from George to George, from George Washington to George Bush, because members, various members of this family were uh, well connected to George Washington. And Jack Greenway, who is another uh, descendant of James Dinsmore, uh, was a classmate of George Bush's at Yale University. Throughout the generations, members of this family traveled extensively, mixing with powerful and influential people. But they all came back here. They still come back here. There's something about the place that was a haven for the family. It's where they found um, peace, they found solitude here, they found understanding and love, and these are the things that we, we would like to offer to people, to come here as a haven in a busy life that they have. Patty and Tilden Selms traveled all the way from North Dakota so their daughter Isabella could be born at the Boone County Farm. The doctor who helped with the delivery had traveled from Rome, New York, and while waiting for the big event, he drew these sketches. Isabella grew into a woman of stunning beauty. There was such a commotion when young men gathered to watch her painting during a visit to Paris, police escorted her away. As a friend of the bride, she was a bridesmaid at the wedding of Eleanor and Franklin Delano Roosevelt in 1905. Later that same year, Isabella married Robert Ferguson, a former rough rider with Teddy Roosevelt. Over the years, she was married three times and had three children. She migrated west, settling in Arizona, where she was elected to Congress in the mid-1930s. It was her children, Martha Ferguson Breasted and John Selms Greenway, who maintained the Boone County home and farm in recent years. No real farming has been done here since the mid-1950s, and very little has been changed in the house since the mid-1920s. Martha Breasted has lived here off and on, and Hannah Baird clearly remembers the first time they met. And I came down on a very wet and dreary, cold fall day, and she met me gloriously and robustly at the front door, uh, saying how gl glad she was to have me and to meet me. And we had our lunch entrees in the dining room in front of the fire and spent the entire afternoon talking about her family uh, and this place and the involvement that they had had with um, great fig public figures in American history. And since then, my life has never been the same. When you walk in the front door, the whole rest of the world is shut out. You never think about it as long as you're in this house. You're just transported back in time, and everyone feels this. It's just a presence in the house of the people who have who have lived here, the things that went on in their lives, the things that were important to them. One interesting reaction that, that everybody has uh, when they, they come in and they go through the house, they come away thinking about home. My home, my aunt's home, my grandparents' place, and it, it becomes a very personal experience for them. In 1986, the Dinsmore Homestead Foundation was formed. Two years later, it purchased the house and about 30 acres surrounding it. The foundation's goal from the beginning has been the preservation of this historical treasure. 
it had such heartfelt unanimity that we didn't need to discuss it. But the reason for preserving it was that it is as it is. In fact, it, it is a museum. It doesn't need to be made a museum. The problem is not to make it a museum, but to keep it as it is and make it available. Today, during special events like the Harvest Festival, the fresh smells of home cooking fill the air, much like they did in the days when this log cabin served as a cookhouse. That cabin was used to cook all the food for whoever was in this house, and um, it was carried across. You see that pathway out there now. It was carried across in blizzards, thunderstorms, whatever, day and night, whenever it was necessary to get food into the house here, it was carried from there. The Harvest Festival is one of a series of special living history events held annually. It celebrates Kentucky's heritage, helping us better understand how the Dinsmores and others lived in earlier days. This hinge here was actually found here on the property. It's a hand forged, hand welded uh, barn door hinge. And this was all made by a blacksmith. It's all completely handmade from a piece of raw steel. During the holiday season, the old-fashioned family Christmas is a celebration of tradition. It was the night before Christmas when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. Springtime brings new buds, singing birds, and children who come here to play the simple games kids played years ago. What they did was they took an iron hoop off of a barrel when they were finished and then they'd take a stick and then they'd have to hit the barrel hoop with a stick and make it roll. The Dinsmore Homestead's award-winning school tour program is a dream come true for teachers like Amy Torres. Oh, this has been a wonderful experience for me as a teacher because it makes history come alive for the students. It's a way for them to experience the past. It's neat because like you're just not sitting at a desk writing down with pencil and paper. Like you get to do things that they did and then you learn history and everything. Lots of kids don't really like to learn in school because it's so boring and you have to sit in lousy desks. But out here you get to be out in the wild and everything and you still learn. When you're in school you're just sitting there reading it and like when you do it with excitement usually you remember it more easily and you have fun time. I've been, been involved with the cemetery and they are very receptive to anything you say and very interested in learning about the different things in the cemetery. Um, the main question that they ask most of the time is how do they get the casket up the hill? because it's quite a hill to climb, but uh, there's so many interesting things to learn there. Julia loved to write poetry. It's an example for them to want to know more about their heritage and to know why they are who they are and why they're where they are in life. This will eventually be more than just a house museum and a working farm, a demonstration farm. We hope that Dinsmore will someday be the center for scholarly studies, uh, studies of the Ohio River Valley, the people, the place. It's a wonderful thing to know that the opportunities to learn will never end here. Hurry, old clock, you are so slow, and my heart impatient beats so fast. The time is tedious, I long to go. Oh, if partings were only past, and we might meet in that dreamland blessed where all my troubles I might forget, clasped once more to my darling's breast. But the clock ticked on, not yet, not yet.